Welcome everyone. This is the 14th of July 2021 and we're here in Debarra Spoken Word, virtually coming to you from Clonakilty in West Cork in Ireland. Um, tonight we have a very special guest, Massimo Elijah. He's a spoken word poet and he was born and raised in Philadelphia. He um, says that he loves how the arts can give people the freedom of expression and also the common ground for coming together, which is what has been happening throughout the COVID period. Um, and it, it is a great pleasure, Massimo, to welcome you here tonight. So off you go. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you having me. This is, this is so wonderful. Um, uh, when I was talking with uh, Moza about doing this event, um, she had, uh, First of all, she is really wonderful about uh, being so creative and, and giving me lots of freedom about ways to approach this. Um, so for that reason, um, we, we talked and we thought we'd try something different. Um, usually I perform pieces uh, memorized and they're very uh, tightly written and polished. And, um, but one thing I love to do is also uh, improv and just freestyle poetry. Um, and this is very uh, experimental. And I've actually never uh, performed like this before. So this is new waters for me. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just for a little guidance, maybe if, uh, if you all feel like it, people could drop words in the chat box um, that uh, I can kind of use as guideposts. And be before you put the words in, um, one thing about my poetry is I don't use any proper nouns. So no, nothing, uh, I don't use any words that are, that would be capitalized, like a person, place, or thing that's specific. And the reason I do that is because it tends to be more universal so that anything I say could be applicable to anybody in any place, any time, any gender, any situation, anything like that. Um, so I, I probably won't use all the words that you drop in, but it's nice because, you know, sometimes you just go all kinds of places. And for me to come back as an anchor, I may look back to the chat box and just say a word. Um, and I think what I'll do is uh, this set is 20 minutes. So I'll just improvise for about 15 minutes. And then the last five minutes I'll do, I'll close with, with a piece um, that's written. Um, and uh, I want to thank again uh, Margaret O'Regan, who I've really enjoyed connecting with at you know even other poetry events, and I love your poetry as well. And also, you're a very gracious host. And uh, uh, Stan, um, you know, also uh, I have uh, you know had the pleasure of being emceed by you before, and also I've heard your poetry too. And just all these creative, wonderful people. Um, I'm glad to be you know, uh, shown such welcome in this community. And all that said, uh, bear with me with the freestyling because, you know, it's, it's right off the top of the head. Uh, it's very experimental. So thanks for going on this journey with me. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect as, you know, as maybe a polished piece may be, but um, what I thought I'd do to kind of just make the atmosphere nice is I'm gonna put on uh, Arvo uh, Parrott is a musician, a uh, classical musician, and uh, I thought I'd put on his music in the background and just talk for 15 minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. So um, here we go. All right. Mm -mm.
So, assuming you can hear the music, I'll follow, follow it up with words and movement. Thank you for the space to experiment. Um, so very gracious of you. And this is something I enjoy doing in private. It helps me sort of pull back wherever my mind went. And if not to guide it, then at least not mind it. And without a rhythm to time it, it's sort of like I let it do its thing naturally. Sometimes what I say catches me, other times I let it pass me. But my theory is that it is how it has to be. And most times my effort to change it only distracts me. So thank you for having me. And poetry is something that I do passionately. It's magic to me. And sometimes the effort to fly too high flattens me. But even the hardness of the earth is uh, like a soft feathered mat for me because it always reminds me that my roots uh, bring me back to me. Is the sound okay? Can you hear me over the music? And the thumbs up uh, help me uh, stay engaged at least a little because every small movement in a way can be pivotal. Life need not always be a riddle. Sometimes it's beautiful because it's simple. So I enjoy this moment as it is. Maybe I veer this way or that away, but I have to look at the words you shared because they help guide my pathway. Someone said passion. Well, that's perfect because uh, there's passion in this passion. I've learned the difference. Sometimes the world is better without attaching. When desires and truth are clashing, um, it's better to see where I stand in between them and why they're not matching. To go with the speed that I wish to without crashing, I have to remember my limits and know where my anchor needs casting. But it's beautiful. I have wonderful backing. The music is just so lovely that you really don't need anything from me. So someone said gravity and synchronicity. I feel like this body with all its different elements is synced up intrinsically. And there's something in us that does this great work above us and under us that doesn't need us to know, but just appreciate that it is wondrous. And someone in the chat said, Solitude. I could write an etude on solitude because I'm a solitary dude. I love being alone, but there's a difference between isolation and quiet concentration on a self that I know is really the first and last place I must go. Someone once said, Love tells me I am everything, and wisdom tells me I am nothing. And in between, life is a journey between these two of discovering. If I say anything else, I'm partly bluffing, but if I can make it beautiful, then it's poetry worth discussing. So thank you for joining the discussion. I hope that any words I say can be a stimulant for loving. If not in this session, then when you step outside uh, in the life as you keep on progressing. 
but I am tired of learning the same lesson. But I'm also excited that with each step, I still depth in. I used to wish that my life would lengthen, but now I just wish that I can find the center as a perfect place of repose and resting. Because I've seen that waters are only for testing. <laughs> it's better to find peace that's everlasting. That in the midst, midst of any storm, um, you can find shelter. So someone said, cathartic. I know the music is rising, so I should be rising. But at the same time, I try to remember that for me, it's more about the timing, more about the idea for the inspiring. It's about the emotion for matching the music, whether upward or downward spiraling. And oftentimes it's a balance for the finding or maybe something you forget that something in the present moment reminds you of who you thought you needed reminding. But these are just thoughts of mine randomly intertwining. But if they come out in a way that somehow aligns with something that you're thinking, then I feel like uh, maybe we share an inkling of something worth this connection for the moment. But let me take a pause, and look at the list. Someone said touch. They say everything is touching. Everything is contiguous. Whether it's far across the universe or just somebody next to you or your bones and your flesh or words, whether they connect, or different people not realizing they intersect. They call it the butterfly effect. But I don't know. As I sit here, I think of something to say but there's nothing really to share. Everything I say, I just pluck out of thin air as I sit in my chair with beautiful velvet red behind me. So thank you all for taking the time to mind me. It took a long time for me to find me. And I think the issue was that I thought I was something to find instead of realizing I'm me. But this is very cathartic. This is a way of healing. It might not be too revealing, but the most I can promise you is that it's the real thing. And I appreciate the communion. I appreciate the faith that you had in me and what I'm doing. It's a very unpredictable journey, but often uh, our greatest inspiration is not always found in certainty or surety. I think number one for me is relating to you personally and earnestly. So let me take a break from the music and I'll spit a written piece, but thank you for this moment of release. I appreciate it. And I'll move on to something more calculated, but uh, this music is so gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the music. And uh, 
Um, can, does anybody want to turn their mic on and and uh, I don't know say anything? I'm just I'm just taking a breather. If anyone wants to, you know, say something for maybe a minute, and then I'll do a written piece, and then I'll freestyle for maybe another seven minutes, do one more written piece, and then we can call it a wrap. Massimo, that was so so impressive. It's, well, thank you. Um, Simu said it was skillful, and I think that describes it. It's it's hard to believe that all those words were plucked out of thin air, like you said. Very hard to believe. Oh, thank it's you. Absolutely amazing, and oh, it's thank you very also much. top quality improvisation. No wonder oh, you do you. well in slams. That's real slam material. It's brilliant. Great flow. Oh, thank you so much as well. I appreciate that so much. Thank you very much. I'd actually like to know something, and I don't know if you want to maybe later come back to that or whenever, you know, whenever it fits, but like, you know, like, do you have any principles for rhyming? Uh, and like, like, do you have ready-made pairs uh, in your heads that you can slip in? Um, actually, uh, sometimes after doing it for a while, a lot of it is kind of subconscious. And it's funny, I have to break away uh, break away from it sometimes because you, you get into a word pattern and it feels false if you do the same thing twice if every time you know you say the word rhyme you say the word time it gets it gets stale really fast so after doing this for a while I said you know what maybe the rhymes won't be brilliant maybe the timing won't be perfect but if I can try to mean what I say and have it be something relatively nourishing that's my guiding post and then the rest I just you know kind of let fall into place so this is very experimental like I say I, I haven't done this before but it's something I like to do by myself um, and uh, so the fact that uh, Mose gave me a chance to you know, just, just do this. I, I love seeing other people do it because I, I feel like this is, this is where the inspiration for more polished work comes from. It's just somebody being in, in the present and, uh, you know, speaking their, their heart and mind as, as closely as, as, you know, possible at the moment. Yeah, can I ask you, Massimo, do a lot yeah. of other people do it? Well, in the U.S., freestyling is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So usually it's hip hop. Rarely, you rarely see people freestyle poetry. Sometimes, sometimes it happens, but mostly it's hip hop. And that's a whole nother skill level. That's amazing. I mean, to do that, racing to a beat <laughs> is, is pretty incredible. Yeah. I just um, want to say that last night you started with uh, what's, you, you went into the receptive phase of the eye where what's invisible creates visibility. I just think you think in a metaphysical kind of way a lot. And uh, it was just amazing, um, uh, just the way your language runs and uh, just the musicality of it. Um, but in this climate, you know, and I suppose I'm naturally a little bit of a, I'm a bit of a chancer, I write uh, songs on the night a little bit. But um, there's a very strong climate towards um, anti-rhyme and uh, then almost uh, some poets are actually quite snobbly, snobbish about uh, rhyme, rhyme poetry. Uh, it's 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 either really suited to um to improving and to slam poetry, or mm. there's another genre. It has to be all um, deconstructed and um, and slam rhyme and stuff, you know. So I just wonder what your feeling is on that. It's it's um it's closely aligned to music the way you speak. Well, thank you so much, Vance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and of course, you know, your the way. The way you use words with music, you know, I love that too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Can I just say yeah. something? Matthew? Yeah, please, please, please. <clears throat> I I put in the word touch into the into the chat, and you came back with a piece that uh, that you wrote that you said across the universe, and across the universe is one of my favorite poems that I've written myself. So okay. I want to. There's a link here, man. There's connection. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. That's wonderful. We could make a poetry tree. Like a poetry. <laughs> like yeah, where hey, we all yeah. branch off with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were synchronizing. Awesome. The comments are all synchronized, you know. The three of us wrote the same word 
like that. And yeah. I, I'm looking at chats all the time. I've never seen the word written down, you know, the adjective. So it would just there's a synchronicity when you're listening as well. Yeah. People tune, you know. Yeah, there's a big uh, in in you in the U.S. There's a big, especially in um, the you know African American tradition. There's a big call and response tradition, mm -hmm. and it originally comes from. I mean, it's originally singing, call and response, but in hip hop, that's a big thing that you don't see it as much in recorded hip hop. But when you're around people, mm -hmm. um. It's really cool. People will rhyme and they'll rhyme off each other and talk about things. And so the collaborative element that poetry has sometimes that rhyming kind of helps uh, give people something to uh, have like a metric they can they can both mm -hmm. uh, connect on or yeah, so or a parameter, I guess that's a good way to put it. So so, yeah, I love anything that adds to the collaboration of, uh, you know, more than one person is, is often really cool. Can so I, yeah, thank, thank you all so much, yeah. Can I ask, can I ask something? Um, well, yeah. firstly, we are going to do a Q and A after your next piece, but yeah. I, yeah. I just read that D was saying call and response is a sudden thing. That's something I do when belting out poems. Maybe mm -hmm. at, yeah. at the open mic or something, maybe you could do a call and response as well, improvise that. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I can't do it alone. So yeah. if yeah. anybody else, you know, has, has something, you know, we can, we can connect on, I'd love to. Uh, but would, I'll, I'll let, I'll let. The call and response thing, depending on which poem it is and how many people in the audience are willing to join in the audience participation for it. Well, I, how about, how about I, I leave, I leave that to you to, uh, to, um, yeah yeah so so d you know if you want to do that that's yeah, awesome I'll, and i you I'll know i'll support another, you i'll do that at another open mic i'm gonna do publish it today okay okay <laughs> awesome awesome well so, I, I'm, I'm quite happy you know if you want maybe a bit later we can just try it you, you say something and what somebody okay. else yeah, sure. And this, and I love that this can be organic. That's my favorite thing. A part of uh, favorite part about it is the freedom. So, what I'll do now is I'll just hit a. Uh, uh, how how much time do I have, Moza? So what I'll do, I have a short written piece, and then maybe I'll freestyle for five minutes, and then do another short written piece. Is that all right with everybody? Okay. So. Uh, this is the short written piece. I herald from a world beyond the plane that I see on, deeper than the day lights of life that I dream on, deeper than the night times of flight that I sleep on, this light that I seek, that I keep, that I feed on, this mind that I lead on with reasons I lean on, these senses so sensuous I'm bent to and keen on, a life full of left turns and right ones that seem wrong. When hindsight and foresight unite, still I keep on. Before clouds to stream down the ground with our feet on. Thoughts of becoming or thoughts that will be gone. I have a strong feeling I've been a being all along. I have a strong belief that the beyond's where I belong. Before people, places, and nations, all orientations, names, languages, races. There's a presence present and ageless, a timeless essence that's spaceless, wordless, and faceless. I can't place it, it's placeless, and I can't name it, it's nameless. All I know is I feel its traces, and everywhere that I go, it graces. So that was the written piece, but maybe I'll take it a little bit further if you could be patient. And it becomes spontaneous, but only if I make it. And I really appreciate this chance to be semi-naked because I'm vulnerable and at this juncture, I can't fake it. So it's always so lovely to just have you partake in it. And that way it's sacred. So maybe what I'll do now is I'll do one, one last piece because I want to I want to shorten this and we'll have time for everybody to, to do something. So I'll do one last written piece and uh, thank you all for, for uh, 
for joining me on this, this experiment, experimental journey. Um, I always like to end with this piece because it's, you know, um, it's like a little, little kind of prayer for me. Um, it goes, may all beings be happy and may our healing come naturally. May we all find peace gradually so finally there's nowhere and no one we'd rather be. And if there are any who are suffering, may there be an end to your suffering. A peaceful world is a lovely thing, but inside each of us is where it must begin. And may the lost find freedom and then help us find the way when we see them. Whatever each of us may be seeking, May we have peace for our finding and our keeping. And may we all find rest and see how the meaning of being is being blessed. Every moment that you breathe could be your next. So find what makes you truly love and let it lead the rest. And may we all find forgiveness. Over burnt bridges may love bridge the distance. Mistakes that we make show that we make a difference. May innocence thought lost be found in this instance. And most of all, may you, you be happy and find the feeling of your joy that comes naturally. May we all find peace gradually, though finally there's nowhere and no one we'd rather be. And that's it. So peace and love and thank you for coming to, to to see me and you guys always show me so much so much uh so much love and i appreciate that so yeah so let, let me hear let me hear what you guys got well i think what well, you know we we already started a bit of a q a and maybe people have more questions to you yes yes sure sure of course I'll start yeah, with that. myself because I always have. <laughs> no, uh -huh. I was just wondering if you do the poetry. Do you? Are you emotional? Um, you know, it's funny when I'm by myself. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so when I when I perform with other people, I, I'm not emotional. Maybe tender, you know, because it's like talking to a friend or somebody you care about. Um, so there's a uh, a, hu a human connection that's kind of emotional but um my most emotional stuff is uh is not is not is not usually public yeah thank you uh -huh. it's more like when you're writing it is it the the emotional side of of, of it like when you when you're actually writing the piece, when you're developing the piece by yourself, that's when the, the when the emotion comes through. But when you present it, you have it practiced, you have it rehearsed, um, you have it in presentation mode, and the emotion is obviously taken back a little bit. Is it? You know, it's it's really funny. It's kind of like uh, my emotion is very removed from my poetry. My poetry, when I write it, it's almost like. Uh, a third party observer of myself even sometimes, um, which is strange because, you know, in art, usually that art is like the main outlet for someone's emotions or feelings or. Uh, and, what, what, I, what I wanted yeah. to say earlier as well about what you were saying, you know, about that it kind of comes to you automatically like that. And where you're describing now it's even like an observer kind of thing it's you know your brain is receiving something here uh, i think that's from from a bigger realm as in our brains do when we write generally i think and i think when we do it a lot a lot and all the time that's one like i've experienced it too for little time stretches of time <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that that's when i get into what i call the poetic mode you might call it the flow as well uh, and that's when like everything i think comes in some form of poetry be it 
be it metaphorical imagery wise or be it sound wise rhyme wise you know uh, so but that's yeah. those are very special times they mean that i have had the time to indulge myself in poetry mainly so that that poetic mode is is, is actually in flow and then there's other times where it isn't in flow when i haven't done it enough so yeah yeah that's wonderful yeah yeah can you relate to that too yeah well, that's that's definitely a beautiful thing about uh, art in general is it's you you heal other people and are healed yourself by expressing. So I, I love that. Yeah, I saw um, I saw uh, I see I saw D D putting up her hand. Yeah, I have two questions for you. Question number one at the risk of sounding like um interviewing you for rolling stone how long <laughs> have you been a performance poet um i was telling moza this uh in, in an interview she did um of me uh i used to want to be a rapper and i just couldn't for for a lot of reasons the form was too too restrictive for me because what I wanted to say was a little bit different. The way I wanted to say it was different. So with poetry, you can slow down. Say, with, oh, so, but that's not what you asked. You asked me how long I've been doing it. And I've been doing it, poetry for like 10 years, maybe. And the second question is, what inspired you to become a poet? But I think you answered that question already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for those. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Susanna has a, has a question. Hey, Susanna. Hey. Hi. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what about your favorite writers or your favorite singer, your favorite po poet? Because um, we all have a favorite um, artist. Uh, we try to not to copy, but we get inspiration from. So is there, is there anyone in your life in particular? So in my life or someone that is- uh, well, so, 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 You know, anyone either alive or that it has been, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So as far as, as, far as famous people, um, Rumi had a, Rumi made me change my style a lot. I used to be very different. Um, but Rumi is the one who, I don't know. It's just like, you can, you can take a book of his poetry and just let it fall open and you'll find something that relates to you at that moment. And he says these really heavy things so tenderly. And I, and I love that about his poetry. So Rumi for sure. Um, and then people that I, someone that I know um, when I was young, there's a guy named, uh, uh, Mark Joseph Moody, and he's from Haiti, or his family's from Haiti. He grew up in uh, New York, but he does a combination of tap, modern dance, and spoken word poetry, oftentimes with music backing him. Yeah. And when he did his, he, and it's a one man show that he does. Um, and it blew my mind because uh, I, I love that you know, with this human body, there's so much we can express and, and do with it. And uh, I find that, like, I love music, I love bands, I love really well-produced things. I love that kind of music, but I also appreciate when someone can use their body as the, the most powerful instrument, using, uh, just whether it's movement or talking or anything you can do that's your, your most powerful, you are your own most powerful instrument. So I love that. So those two people. So yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Lauren? Yeah, um, for sort of on topic, but sort of off topic. Hey, um, memorization. How do you do it? I had to memorize a poem recently for a video, 
and it drove me absolutely crazy like uh, is this easy to you or is this just like as you're doing the dishes and you're walking and you're showering you're like repeating them to keep them fresh i'm just constantly amazed that you can you can oh, do that you. from your memory thank you thank you you know the joke that i always say is that if you rhyme you only have to memorize half but that's not really true you still you know but uh one thing i like about so the way i write makes it a lot easier because uh, it's kind of like and, and rhyming is a big help too because some things fit and some things don't so there aren't a million ways that you could say something yeah if if, if the first line is this and it rhymes then it narrow and it's in meter it really narrows down what the second line could be so if somebody were rewriting my poetry they would still end up doing some of the lines the same way because that's all that that would fit so that's part of it but then the other part of it too is uh um like i i know my voice like i know what i would say and mose was asking me earlier about inspiration and i said i think my biggest source of inspiration or what makes it easier for me is the limitations that everything is narrowed down. If I could write about the current political situation and romantic relationships and uh, um, some, something like pick a topic, like I'd be over, I'd be swamped. And not only would it be hard for me to just jump into in, to writing, but it would also be difficult for me to remember every detail of what I'd written because the possibilities of what I could have said would be so vast. So that's, I think my answer to your question is very tight parameters help me know uh, exactly what I said and how I said it. Yeah, that's so cool. It reminds me of, uh, there's this book, was it, so I think it might have been uh, Rosaline who said it earlier, but about like in flow, there's this book by this um, psychologist, um, Chekhov Mihaly is his name, on flow. And he talks about like memorization or the art of memorization as a kind of way to like structure your consciousness. So by by memorizing and doing stuff like this, or you're structuring your own consciousness, which like it just reminded me of what you were saying there. But I thought that that might be a phrase that, that, that you might like uh, structuring your consciousness. Yeah. Anyway, th uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, awesome. Lauren. Yeah. Lauren, can you type that name? Yeah, I'll get I'll get the book there for a second and I'll send it to you. Um, you send me the German cream. <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone else have any other question or contribution? I hope I'd I remind like you that add... Yeah, I just talked to us. I, I, sorry, I'd like to add a little bit to the to the uh, memorizing aspect. Um, generally because i think that you know it's um yes i do go around through my days and re repeat and repeat if i prepare if i am preparing for uh, an event uh, i memorize the set uh, it takes me about a fortnight to do so i take a day per poem and then after that i have the whole set um so the first day goes just into the poem and i do it wherever i stand and walk and do dishes and you know garden whatever whatever wherever and uh, um, first it's obviously with the page and then I get rid of the page and I go into other places to say it and again and again but then to have them ready for any other time I want to perform when it's not within the frame of that particular performance I have prepared for that's when I falter and that's where I need to keep them refreshed all the time so sometimes uh, I do um, you know pick a poem and kind of try and go through it with just in my own brain in order to uh, bring it back sometimes I even make a bigger effort than to pull it out and bring it back and so that's what I can add for practical for the practical side of it yeah yeah cool cool yeah when I have to memorize monologues what I do uh, and if I have a really short time I ask my son to feed me the line because if someone is feeding you the line, so he's telling you the first line and you have to repeat it and you hear it twice. Um, and it's really, really fast to, to learn. Yeah. Another way is to learn, uh, uh, yeah, uh, to learn it through my favorite song and kind of sing it. 
yeah yeah <laughs> and then to keep it to keep them fresh in the memory i repeat them by um, changing the tones yeah yeah learn the yeah. tricks <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right, uh, yeah, Massimo, the, the music thing came in really ha handy because I wanted to ask about your impromptu moment there. The the music that you added, is that to help, you know, us along with your beats or do you put it on simply because it inspires you and therefore it will inspire you to come up with something? Or why? Why? Yeah, yeah, it's it's both and very, very much so both. Like, I think one thing is... Um, well, especially with freestyling, I knew I was going to hit pauses and be like, okay, what am I going to say? Or like, I'll, I'll be on a tangent and I'm like, is this going somewhere? Maybe not. Let me come back this way. Or so I have like safe safety measures. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I had people put words in the chat. Um, and also why I did the music, because for me to just freestyle and then I go, um um okay it's not the same experience so no matter and this is one thing about art i feel like no matter how deep you delve or new territories you explore your first obligation is to give people a, a good experience so that's why i wanted to have a, a cushion but for me as far as inspiring me i like the music because that's where my poetry comes from is the first place it comes from for me is music. Mm -hmm. And Nikki Giovanni, who is a, a female writer, I don't know if you've heard of her, but she says, I like this quote, she says, music and poetry go, go very nice together, like mommies and daddies and strawberry and cream. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, if there was nobody, I was going to ask you, um, just uh, uh, I was interested in the classical element, uh, even your name has a European vibe to it. It's like Massimo Varela sounds kind of Italian or Latin. But also, when I'm listening to you, I'm thinking the classic lines like Be the bubbles beating at the brim, uh, bubbling, beating at the brim, is it? Is it Keats? And do you know, like, to be or not to be? That's the question. I think there's a Shakespearean cadence with it, you know, there's a rhythm. And the little the little splits you do are very like spoken Shakespearean verse at times. Oh, okay. okay. Have you yeah, any thank interest you. in that at all? Have you? That's a huge. That's a huge compliment. I think Shakespeare is uh, is, is brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's exactly the way you deliver yes. your lines. A lot of the time, there's a, there's a, there's um there's a like so we'll go to the rhythms. But I'm hearing the ta 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 da 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 a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's wonderful how speech is naturally kind of melodical. Mm -hmm. Even even when I listen to people talk, there's uh, we kind of always create uh, a little bit of a natural melodic rhythm with it. So it's nice to play with that because it's kind of like things you hear every day uh, are enjoyable when you showcase them just a conversation with somebody who has a beautiful voice or has an interesting uh, accent or talks uh, in a certain pace that's interesting. If they were to say, okay, I'm showcasing this for an open mic. Now let's talk about, uh, you know, the conversation we had last Thursday about, our, you know, our, my, my child or somebody I love. It's like worth showcasing. So I think speech is beautiful that way. So, you know, like, I like what you said about Shakespeare um and the way he the way he writes his poetry is musical mm -hmm. and he had a very strict meter too like you said yeah you have metrics um, there and keats and byron and shakespeare they're very old classic but it, it's it's coming it's coming from such a hybrid of places but i hear the that classical sound and even your joe's classical music like no it is just interesting you know thank you thank you yeah. I think that's one, one, one more thing about with, with Max. I think that's so funny because when, when I started writing and even when I write now, I never aspired to be like classical poets. I aspired to be like hip hop artists. Yeah. Which people might see as the, the complete opposite, but it's funny how they, because it's such an ingrained human 
like source of inspiration it comes out and like like uh um sue was saying about the poetry uh it's it's beautiful how these things connect yeah what was that did you have another question your hand is up yeah i was wondering you you said you were uh um yeah the po the poems or the words were coming out of thin air but i was wondering because you know people have different ways of experiencing like some are visual some are more uh focused on audio or whatever if because you were looking in 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 the uh, uh, above you it was almost as if you saw something is that how you experience it or is that uh, can you say something about is it are you visual when you try when you write do you have any visual um image you know you know what it is it's it if that it's an old idea for me that that i like where when i think of an idea that i have or something i'm saying i feel like there are thousands of ideas and words as possibilities all the time and i'm not creating something so much as i'm like plucking it from the ether kind of, you know it's kind of like if you if you just you know you know how they call them clouds like when they talk about the internet or information they call them clouds uh, i really feel like that sometimes just i'm i don't have to be a creator all the time sometimes i could just be like a good like cherry picker <laughs> Yeah. Does that mean that you see see the words, see the that like you see the images, see if you say it's clouds. it's it's very visual for me sometimes, but I don't see words. I see ideas. So words don't flash across my uh, what is an idea mind like? like some people might. And so ideas are like um like. If there's an idea of, okay, I had, I think I had a line when I was freestyling something about somebody said passion, passion. And I think I said something about, I love passion, but I have to work on that attention and knowing everything's passing, something like that. <laughs> and I, when I see the idea, I, maybe I just seen dualities. I'm a Gemini. I don't know. But I, I see, okay, there's this thing that has this connotation of being good, but it also has a connotation of not being good. And there's another thing that has a connotation of being good and not being good. Where can I link, link them so that the weakness of this idea is strengthened by the strength of this idea and the weakness of this idea is strengthened by the strength of this idea. That's how my mind works with ideas. So it's kind of like, I go like this, because every, everything I, every concept I weigh has a hold. <laughs> Nothing is like, even the word love, like I never say love, like I know love can be problematic, it's just like anything else in my, in my mind. And then I'll take something like uh, pain, and just like anything else, pain can have redemptive qualities too. So I just take ideas like that and hook them on to each other. That's that's my that's what I do in a nutshell. My jig is up. <laughs> no, I, I, that's right. I, I see you, and I saw that right from the beginning. Searching, always searching beyond the binary for the authentic. I mean. I think you see the binary. It reminds me almost of Du Bois double consciousness, you know. Mm. I see how you see me, but I know who I am. It's like that tension and you're always like searching for the authentic because there are the shadow sides of every there's the I, I see you working always with tensions, which is in my view very contemplative. Thank you. you know, you're, Thank you're you. looking for the you're looking for the center of everything, you know, what's whole. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. That's absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you're a beautiful. Catherine, um, do you have a thank you. Thank you very much. contribution or question? Yeah, I have a question for um, Massimo, but I have a question for everybody else as well. Um, 
I believe that uh, writers are, are conduits and that um, we, we kind of, like as, as Matthew said, clouds are passing and you, you pick and choose what ones you want. But, and as well as that, if the cloud, if you're not fast enough to pick it up, it's gone, it's gone to somebody else. So I'm just interested for, as a group, um, do we believe that we're conduits? I'd love to hear from from somebody, you know, and I've, I've been talking a lot. I, I wish I wish that was always true. A few times I I felt like that, that I like the highlights and the, the rest is a lot of searching. I think that's the ideal, even though you, you never own it then, but so what? If you'd asked me that question this time last night, I would have said I agree with you 100%, Catherine. But I watched um, a there's a Netflix documentary about music on at the moment. It's called This Is Pop. And I watched the one about the Brill Building um, last night. And there is a woman called Linda Perry. She writes for Christine Aguilera and all these kind of people. She was the lead singer with a band called Four Non Blondes. And they, they, what, what's the thumbs down for the Christine Aguilera? No, all pop stars, no matter what time period the music was created in. Go ahead, Stan. I have no idea what he said. Please, please, please. <laughs> no, anyway, doesn't matter. So they asked her about that kind of thing. And, and then the, the interviewer said, so you think you're tapping into something? And she said, no, I think something's tapping into me. And I thought that was really cool. I, I too think that we're like, we're receivers as in our brains are receivers. And like when I experience a writing flesh, the, you know, that's when that inspiration hits directly and often what flows onto the page hardly needs any editing then there are those other moments where I'm searching and it, it's a bit harder and it's not the writing flash it doesn't seem like it's the writing flash but still my brain is a receiver so whether I receive it in one flash or whether I pick it out of the clouds or from between the different thoughts uh, that float about uh, that's you know it's a different type of labor but it's still being a receiver so i do think we are conduits um when we are creative uh, in general and um um yeah yeah d what were you saying about pop stores d? it's in the chat it's in the chat right now okay <laughs> <Pop music sucks. laughs> oh, that's an opinion. That's not true. <laughs> Get a referee. You expressed your, I'm glad you uh, expressed your opinion, Dee, but like the definition of pop music is really strange. Lots, well, of, could... lots of things people don't think of pop music or pop music, but that's just why. Yeah. I, I could say that about classical music because it was like I grew up with it so much as in my parents were only listening to that and only allowing us to listen to stuff like that if we were listening to the radio uh, for like pop music like you said they had that judgment so it was like for me it was classical music was rammed down my throat and nowadays I find it really difficult to actually really go with that flow you know I do like elements of classical music everywhere but you know it's it's a, it's a taste, it's a matter of taste, really. It's a matter of what's been rammed down, what throat, and so on. Music is music. Exactly, yeah. To get back to what Catherine was saying earlier, there's this really interesting TED talk by Elizabeth Gilbert. She's the one who wrote E, Pray, Love, and it's basically yeah. about, about the muse. This TED talk, it's really short. I could not recommend it more, but it, like, it gets onto exactly what, what Catherine was saying there. And she's talking to a few... Um, it's like a really famous songwriter she's speaking about and a really famous uh, American poet yeah. and like that is definitely the, the experience that they describe for their creativity it's like you know I actually have a poem inspired by this TED talk I might read it at the open mic later but the poet was saying that like basically like you know she'd be out in the field and she would feel the poem thundering over the landscape and she knew she just had to drop it and run and get to the paper and get to the yeah. pen and literally channel the poem from the clouds onto the page and if she didn't get there in time then the poem would just keep on rolling over the landscape until it found another poet who was more fleet of foot um so i just think that that's like it's just so spot on what catherine was saying but then elizabeth also goes on about like you know the muse and how 
how we looked at the muse differently in different cultures through different generations of like, you know, of, or, 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 or the muse visiting us in some generations versus now, you know, it's more like this individual, oh, you're a, you're a genius. Like there's a lot more pressure on the genius as opposed to like being visited by the muse because then the muse, there's like kind of like a separation, but I suppose it's more about like the psychology of creativity and the constructs that we need to create to sort of protect us almost from our work and distance us from our creativity because like she was talking from the perspective of you know having written Eat Pray Love and it being such a huge success and people kept on coming up to her going oh what are you going to do next you're never going to be able to do something as good as that you know the muse is never going to be coming back, back to you um, after that but anyway look I could go on and I wouldn't do it justice but I think it's only about 20 minutes um, but it's a it's a great talk and uh, definitely it might inspire a poem or a piece of work of your own. Can you type that into the chat? Yeah, sure, definitely. And yet, being inspired, we used to have a professor way, way back in the day who uh, who would read excerpts from um, the Fifty Shades of Awful Writing, that one, and then go, well, imagine, and we would then sit there as 20-something-year-olds making fun of it, and then he would go, really? Because now imagine being inspired like that and do better, please. And yeah, we'd all be terribly embarrassed. It was awful. Yeah. Was it? I've seen that TED talk, Laura. Did you like it? It was brilliant. Because, and the other, what she says about that, the, the poem thundering over the mountains, I don't know if you remember, she also talks about sometimes she'd get there in time to, to dictate the poem, and sometimes she'd get there too late to dictate the poem, and sometimes she'd get there just in time to pull the poem back through her. To dictate it. It's an amazing talk. That's yeah. So funny. yeah, the poem I wrote from it is spot on that. It's the best part, Stan. It's called Catch the Poem by Its yeah. Tail. Because she catches it by the tail and she pulls exactly. it back into her body. And on these times, the poem comes out perfect, but backwards from the first word to the last. Yeah. And she has so, an analogy in there about the muse. I think it's um, I think it's Tom Waits is driving along. It's a story he tells. That's it, yeah. Driving along in the desert and an idea comes to him and he literally looks up and says to, to his muse, would you ever fuck off and annoy Leonard Cohen for a change? <laughs> Maybe it's not Leonard Cohen, it's somebody anyway, but it's brilliant. Like, it's the the brilliant. best poems come in impossible places, like the shower yeah. or, yeah. you know, the, the, the dream, even. In, 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 you know, the best poems have been happening in dreams. And yeah, or when you're out for a walk and you don't have a pen. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that way. I'm doing a course at the moment of Declan Burke, and he... The first night he said, never go anywhere without your pen and paper, ever. <laughs> Take it with you everywhere. I'm still trying. I was talking, I was having an interesting conversation with uh, another friend of mine. She's uh, an amazing singer. Actually, she calls herself a vocationist, which is oh, wow. someone who uses their body to make rhythms and sings as well. And we were talking about uh, inspiration block. Um, I don't say writer's block because she's a singer, um, but we're talking about blocks of inspiration. And I was telling her, you know, it's been my experience. I can give you a million reasons, just for me personally, I can give you a million reasons why I don't feel inspired or why I do or this or that. But if I sit my butt down at a place to write and stay there and keep at it, something will come out. And anything from whatever I put out can be uh, built upon in beautiful ways. So that's, that's one thing I always try to keep in mind because I'm also very, I'm very sensitive to, is this authentic? Is this coming from the right place? Is it in tune? But then I have to remind myself i'm like look i can snap out of this anytime i want and do what i want say what i want when i want and so with that element of being a conduit is also the element of uh remembering that you can do anything i, I can do anything i want anytime and it's up to me whether uh it, it it's expressing how how i i what, what i want it to yeah Thank you so much, Massimo. Um, even though you called what you're doing here tonight an experiment to us, it was highly professional and oh. so inspiring. 
So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for coming to West Core. Thank you. It was, it's, it's always a huge honor. You're not only, not only beautiful artists, but really beautiful people. That means a lot to me. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So we can go straight on to the open mic. Catherine, um, if you want to say about that, what, they, what the poets were doing and all that. I yeah, think, I, think, I think we've got a, a common denominator here, I think, um, in that we kind of know that we're, well, what I would say, we're used either, even by a muse or used by some, like, as a conduit, but we do know that we have, that we've a listening ability that other people don't have. And I would say that that's an extra sense, you know. It's a, and, I, and uh, as Lauren was saying about that, you know, the, the when you see a poem or you know going over the hills, I know exactly what she's talking about, exactly. And sometimes I would get up in the middle of the night and turn on the light, much to my husband's disgust, and write down the lines. Because in the morning, if you're fooling yourself if you think that it's going to be there in the morning, it will be gone and gone forever. I wrote a piece on the piano once and I was doing the wash up another night and next thing I heard the piece that I wrote on the piano as an, on an RTE documentary and I said what the f like my this this is my this is my piece being played on the radio but obviously somebody else had heard something similar around the same time and I I do think that happens as well mm. I think you're right, synchronicity again there. Um, so Catherine, are you doing the open mic and do you want to start it now? Stan is uh, doing the I open think, mic. I think Lauren is starting the yeah. open mic and I'll, I'll go yeah. second. I'll go second, yeah. Uh, Stan is facilitating the open mic. I think yeah. that's what we agreed, was mm -hmm. it? Do people want to take a break before we do it or do we want to go straight into it? Is there a list already? No. <laughs> You have to enter your name. It won't take long to um, put a list together. Like, So do people want to take a break or will we go straight into it? Because we have two on the list now because we've Lauren and Catherine apparently. And okay. Dean also. It's better to go straight into it, Stan, I'd say. <laughs> okay. Dean, is that your hand up there, is it? For the open mic? Yeah, I raise my hand so you will notice me. <laughs> I'd like to go on the open mic. So Lauren, do you want to kick us off, love? Oh well, yeah, I'm not normally so eager, but like since we've been talking about this Elizabeth Gilbert thing, that uh, I really want to read that poem, <clears throat> and then I, I'll read I'll read another one that, that that might be a bit off, but or suitable for tonight maybe. In its its randomness, it's a stream of consciousness poem. But anyway, this one is called Well Tail. It's by poem the catch, which is catch the poem by its tail. Um, in feathered barley, put ablaze each day by sunset and its early opposite. I grasp the basket woven by my hand and lay my scythe asleep against my harvest. My palms are blistered and my fingers stained by woody skin of grain and plant life juice. I wipe them on my apron sewn by mother, precisely stitched with twin embroidered roses. Then I feel it. Each breath is strange and grows, fingers in lungs to grip my heart and squeeze. I look up over fields through thick, tall trees, a shepherd searching for her friend, the wolf. The earth begins to rumble, pebbles bounce. It grips me in my gut before I see the landscape turn and twist until a track for ancient engine barreling down on me. Beneath my feet, the ground now shakes to shout at me to go to run and run like hell. But I already race down paths narrow between neat rows of crops and scattered crows and up to house my home at kitchen table. I seize a pencil, I wrestle paper sheets. So when the train arrives to thunder through me, I collect it, <clears throat> I capture it on the page. Then other times I am not fast enough. I leave it all when I first feel a rumble, run like I am a wolf with thirst for life, 
but I do not reach home before the thunder crescendos and continues straight on through, up, out of me, back to the fields and trees, around the river and over the land to look for other poets fleet of foot. And then there are the moments when I run and even running still, I almost miss. I'm in the house, the paper and the pencil, but it already hit and plows right through. So I reach out with other hand to catch it, catch the poem by its tail. And I pull it backwards into my body, all while I am transcribing on the page. These times the poem ends perfect and intact but backwards from the last word to the first. And that poem I actually have written down backwards, like that's the way I want it printed out, but I really need to like reverse it for reading it because uh, it's, it's a bit difficult to read it backwards. But anyway, that's the first one. And then I will leave you go after um, this next one. This next one is a stream of consciousness poem and the, the topic is about, um, well, my granny and the church and it's called <clears throat> Bring Flowers of the Rarest. <clears throat> I remember the churches, the Church of the Ascension, St. Vincent's Church, St. Augustine's Church, St. Mary's Church. I remember her, I remember her and me. I remember the vast church with high reaching arches. I counted the panes of stained glass windows tracing the thick lead canes with my mind, the smell of old hymns, the smell of varnished pews, the smell of flowers, the taste of secrets. At Christmas, we wait in a queue for the nativity scene with painted stone characters, sheep, donkey, angel, Mary, Jesus, Joseph, granny. She would take a small clump of hay to disperse strand by strand to keep us safe. The dumb thing is to keep it in your wallet. I have one in my wallet. My mom carries on the tradition. She misses her mom. I miss my mom, even though she has not died yet. I know what is coming, shapeless sadness. What shape is sadness? Her mom died by hemorrhage during labor when she was just a girl. The berry was, baby was buried in the coffin by her feet. In the coffin by her feet, granny suffered from depression and was very hard on herself. My mom suffers from depression and she is very hard on herself. I suffer from depression and I am very hard on myself. Apples and trees, apples and eaves. Did religion bring meaning, structure, afterlife, maybe familiarity, maybe hope, maybe escape from seven children, escape from the house, escape from the times? I suppose it's the same for all believers. I suppose I feel betrayed because she was dedicated to all those Christian rules. She didn't drink, she didn't curse, she didn't have sex except to conceive. Mass today, mass tomorrow, midnight mass, morning mass, Sunday mass, Sunday best, Yahweh, yeah right. She gave it all to the church and was not rewarded on earth, although they are careful to technically not offer that. What a scam. Give me your money. Tell me your secrets. Suffer unto me the children who I will make suffer, and you will get plenty. All you need to do is die. I feel betrayed that they betrayed her. The system was designed to betray, designed to control, subdue, dominate, destroy, control money, money, control money. I sat next to her in church counting glass and flowers while they buried babies and raped. There's more than one way to rape. The body can be raped, the mind can be raped, the heart can be raped, the soul can be raped, the community can be raped, the culture can be raped, society can be raped. Baby booties lined the walk to the last Magdalene laundry on Sean McDermott Street. Hundreds and hundreds of empty baby shoes never worn silence. We walked in silence. We cried in silence. The Pope through a party. They continue to rape my memories, my memories, my private moments with her safe and loved in the church, counting pains, tracing canes, holding her soft and spotted wrinkled hand, immersed in the mysterious adult world, the smoke, the dust motes, dancing like microscopic angels. I now know their dead skin cells or dust my shit, like I now know the robes of organized religion are made from human skin. What would she have done if she had known? 
The Irish have been slaves to the church ever since their pal Patrick drove all the snakes from Ireland. Snakes, pagans, pagan snakes, anyone who's not one of them is a dirty snake. They're the fucking snakes, sticking their snakes in children, stealing children, selling children, burying children in unmarked graves, destroying lives, destroying families, destroying cultures, rewriting cultures. Fuck Christmas, fuck Easter, fuck St. fucking Patrick's Day. Their harvest festivals rewritten by the dirty snakes that betrayed my granny and raped my memories. I almost wish they had kept their promise and somewhere she was dancing in matching shoes with little angel babies, with her twin, with her mom, with her dad, with granddad. And there's always cake, there's always a party, there's always enough and no depression and no money and no sin and no inequality and no perversion and nothing to worry her except social anxiety from the weekly appearance, appearances from Mary, Joseph, Jesus, and the whole holy cabal. But I know that's not true because I know what happens when you die, you're dead. You're just dead, you rot and you disintegrate and things eat you and you become them and then they die and things eat them. And eventually your atoms go back to the beginning, back to the universe where they belong and get recycled into new things like stars and asteroids and space whales and dark matter and plasma and sunlight and oxygen and mushrooms and water and seeds and lava and tardigrades and even other humans. I wish they had just told her the truth because this truth is much more amazing than anything a human can make up. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start, isn't it? So you'll have to send the first poem to Elizabeth Gilbert, you can send a second poem to probably a thousand people, so that could be a longer process. Like, is there no sound? Can you hear me? Oh, I, thought, I thought somebody was indicating they couldn't hear me. Thanks, Lauren, um, for being um, so keen to go first. So, next up is Catherine. Yeah, I wouldn't have been so keen to go second if I'd heard that first. <laughs> Uh, this poem is um, dedicated to Father George O'Mahony, who died recently, and I'm not very religious, but this was a fantastic man, and I'm kind of proud that I could write something for him, a different tone, now to learn, but anyway, it's very short. It's called Underground. Today you are going underground, away from our earthly touch, back to nature's blanket, black hair still. You could have been Viking, shovel hands on altar display. Instead, weather veined fingers played host. We stand as your body lies, wrapped in perfumed robes. Incense sweet, we wipe our eyes, throw thoughts at you. They land with the sound of rain, roses kissing wood. Stones rattle on your breastplate. You are not dead. No red and white bones tonight, Catherine. No? Well, if you want it later, you can have it later, Sam. I don't mind. Yeah, dig it out there. Just if anybody else wants to get on the open mic, it's not too late just to shove your name into the chat. Just your name and, and open mic. Next up, we've got Mosey. Did you not put your name in, Mosey? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. I, I thought, you, thought you looked shocked there for a second. I looked shocked because I, I thought it was way off. <laughs> I could escape. I've got uh, one poem about the past and one poem about the future. First one is called An Empty House. A barrel holding broken toys wedged in a corner next to the radiator. The air is warm, all right. The light and icy white. Far away sounds, faint echoes of frightened voices infuse the walls. Planks warped under the footfall of army boots cluttering upstairs. The child retrieves a Barbie, an eye gone, a leg shattered, still moving up down. At right angles, up down. It helps her wait for the sound of a key turning. That was the past, and this is something else. This is called science faction. Alone in the universe, I think not. I hope not. I know not. 
I have no proof but a rustling of wings, just out of earshot. Battle in the sky reverberates daily, still hurting my eyes. The flashing of lights during lucid nights, magnetic blue and white, 10 times the sun. Red and yellow fire right across time, a loving embrace, reaching through space, weaving a grid. Waves of golden energy, us within it, irrevocably bound and free. That is my evidence, nothing you can see. Scary in it, just feel it with me. And that's it. Lovely. Thanks, Mosey. Waves of golden energy, us within it. Oh, sweet. Oh, sweet. Uh, next up is Rosalind Crowley. Hello and thank you. Thank you, Massimo. That was wonderful. Um, when you talked earlier about uh, where a poem comes from, I used to paint first and then a, a poem would come. So um, I went to a workshop with a, a lady called um, Sherry Wagner, who was the first uh, one of the poet laureates here in Indiana. And after the workshop, she said, Rosalind, could you write a poem about your experience? of walking through the woods where we had our workshop. And I thought, no, I'm, I can't possibly do that. I have to wait for this poem to come to me. And then I thought, you know, Sherry Wagner asked me, so I'm gonna write a poem. And I was pleased with what I wrote. So I'm gonna read it to you now. First off, it comes from my book called For the Sake of Rhyme. It's a compilation of my rhyming poems because I want to bring back rhyme. And I think Massimo, you're ahead of us to make people aware of how, how good rhyme can be. On walking in Shkion Creek Trail, Fort Harrison State Park. What makes us wonder through the woods, the smells, the sounds, the many hues, the hope of seasons, berries, foods, or catching the poetic muse. Like mix of flour and milk for dough, together pummeled and smooth, Words and phrases flourish and flow, reminds me of a lover wooed. Journey similar to this poem, hearts and spirits rooted indeed. Tall sycamore, more than its sum of foliage, branches and seed. Whatever your particular bent, nature calls out to everyone. I am sure happy that I went walking and gathering words for fun. Well and I have another very short poem, and it also mentions the muse. And uh, it's called, You Are Your Own Kite. Something needs to happen to stir the muse. Some thought, some emotion must light the fuse. From hilltop view to valley deep, a bird, a goat, a woolly sheep. An action or a metaphor takes place. Fly high, soar low. You are your own kite in this case. The string is pulled, the west wind wilts, the uplift of the fabric tilts. Like life, the ups are short, the downs take time to sort. The kite, you, can adjust, rising again to shake the dust. The wind, string, and kite are tugged along by might, the poem also has emotion, a spellbound message in the form of a potion. After setting the scene, I hope you understand what I mean. And just to, uh, on that synchronicity or that word that we're, we're connected, uh, when Massimo uh, used the word, I was going to put in the, the uh, chat, uplift as a word. And at one point, if I, I know maybe I heard it, Massimo, but you said in the midst, but I could hear the word lifts. And I, I thought, oh, that's that connectivity that goes on between poets. And I, I appreciate your uh, hearing you today and appreciate reading. Thank you. Mm. Hi to everybody. Thank you, Rosalind. That was lovely. The kite one is, I love the kite one is, uh, you are your own yeah. kite. Is that the title? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what we do in the, if the world um, lost rhyming poetry. I mean, how would we get children into it? Like everything starts with Humpty Dumpty, sat on a wall, <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Do you know what I mean? 
it's nuts. Yeah, I see you there, Mike. Thanks a million, love. Uh, next up is Sublo. Thanks very much. Yeah, right. Wow. Um, very fascinating insights into into our connections with poetry. I have one poem here, which like I, I don't think I'll be doing it. It's in German. I haven't translated it yet. And it's a long poem, so it doesn't really make sense to present it. But it's called Das Poem. And it's very humorous. And it's about how a poem is born. So where, you know, where it comes out <laughs> as in how, how it's actually born. So the whole process of it. But uh, I can't do that yet. I'll have to translate that first. Uh, what I'll be doing now is I'm going to do one uh, to the muse as well. And then I would like to do one that I have in German and my own translation, if that's okay. So this is called Call to the Muse. Oh muse, I'm calling, please strike us back into my life. I'm calling you against the odds of our times, against the dark, the burning heart. Relieve this stress depression. Oh muse, come lift the oppressing news day in, day out about that outer hardship which drains our souls. I'm calling you against the pacts, the wars, the lies, the gold, the gods. Oh muse, come sparkle like the coins I need to feed my family and the banksters' greed. They'll take our house, you know it, muse, destroying lives, the cuts are deep and leave society confused. I call to you for words of explanation for the deeds of those I cannot reach and to those of blindness that they cannot even see. Please bring a lighter sprite. Oh muse, this burden of history, come lift it up and give us dreams, real dreams long dreamt of times when all good folk can work, paid with justice and respect, when hoarding riches holds no gain. Times of equal rights for workers and the rich, for women and mothers, for children, their fathers, for every man and for all countries, big and small. Dreams of helping hands where no one preys on others. Dreams of an equal world for every being, for us all. Oh muse, those simple dreams feel far, far, far away these days. Come lift this darkness from us, muse, and sing with me the blues. That, uh, thanks very much. That was written in 2013. Um, um, it's a long time back, but uh, it triggered um, a, a whole bunch of poems, like flash writing flash poems coming to me in the months after. So literally the, the call to the muse was very effective. Um, uh, this poem, uh, this, this second poem that I'll be doing is, is very much a kind of a lockdown poem. Um, and um, it's about, well, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't mention the lockdown, I don't think. Um, I, I'm not sure how happy I am with the translation, but um, that's for a different group. <laughs> um, this is called Sein und Sehnen. Oh, das Sehnen nach den großen Dingen, dass wir erfüllt und frohsam seien, die ewige Suche nach dem ganzen Glück wo es doch die kleinen Dinge sind, die uns mit tiefstem Sein erfüllen. Von des Morgens zarter Röte bis zum dunklen Samt der Nacht sind es die Dinge des Lebendigseins, der Fluss des Gebens und des Nehmens, die uns mit größtem Leben füllen. Wenn die Pflanzen ihr Wasser haben und das Tier gefüttert und versorgt, wenn unsere Lieben keine Lö Nöte leiden und wir uns an den Früchten laben, die an der Bäume Zweige hingereicht. Ein muntrer Bach am Feldesrhein begleitet uns mit seiner Murmelmelodei, wo helle Sonnenflecken beben und ein Buntspecht klopft den Sommer, das wird des Tanzes Rhythmus sein. Dann spricht zu uns des Lebens Fluss, von dem wir selbst ein Stückchen sind. Denn der tiefste Sinn im Leben besteht im Nehmen und im Geben der Fülle, die die Welt uns gibt. Teilhaben an der Dinge fließen, ist Sinn und Zweck, das Leben zu genießen. Oh, das Sehnen nach den großen Dingen, wo es doch die Kleinen sind, die uns mit echtem Sein erfüllen. Ex. Life and Longing Oh, the longing for the bigger things, that we may be fulfilled and happy. This eternal search for constant fortune, whereas it is the smaller things that fill us with profoundest life. 
From the morning's pale aurora to the darkest velvet night, it is the elements of being alive, the river of giving and taking that fill us with most radiant light. When the flora has its water, the animals are fed and found. When our dearest know no hardship, and we're feasting on the fruit that trees pass from their branches down. A vibrant brook along the field follows us with its melodic murmur, where sunny dapples quiver bright, and woodpeckers tap the summer that shall be the rhythm of our dance. Oh. Then speaks to us the flow of life, of which we are ourselves a part, because the deepest sense of living comes from taking and from giving the abundance that the world provides. Sharing in this elemental stream is sense and purpose of enjoying life. Oh, the longing for the bigger things, whereas it is the smaller ones filling us with true existence. Thanks very much. Yeah, that second one is absolutely beautiful, Sue. Absolutely beautiful. The first one reminded me of talking with the taxman about poetry. So Billy Bragg album. I, I'll actually read the poem that he took. He didn't take the title from. I'll, I'll read it at the end. I'll dig it out. It's brilliant. Thanks so much. Um, okay, so I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce the surname because I'll probably get myself in trouble. So we'll just go with Therese. Perfect translation. <laughs> um, well, I don't know if any of you know Sue Burge, but I was trying to take a workshop with her, but it didn't work because I'm, I was too busy, but she did inspire me. And so uh, this is supposed to be a fairy tale, but I ended up, um, let's see, I sort of said, it's an exercise to create a fairy tale I chose to explore the experience of the dark night of the soul where nothing familiar sustains us, coming through it with only faith to guide us and then the desolation lifts somehow slowly, life unfolds with new consciousness and relationship. One looks the same, but the experience is transformative. That's kind of how I described what it was. So I hope I don't scare anybody. Uh, it's called, I could not search in hell's dark night. I travel out of sight through the dark and dank night at the gate outside the forest. They stand with signs and horns warning us off as terror strikes. Descending down my spine, I was blind to the shadows running across their minds. Withdrawing in fear to the hut I'm assigned with the light that surrounds, I am blinded. No maps. New gods appear who do not rear their offspring to relate as fear drives them from this awful place. Now, just for a while, I start to smile, hearing the familiar song of the bird. I smell the fragrance of a rose, then hear the rushing waters flow ahead of the path on which I tread beneath a canopy of ancient trees. I freeze as I see, just up ahead of me, the terrors of night and my feelings of dread. Descending now into the caves at the city's gate, not yet made for us, I wait. Is awe what I feel? I surrender to faith. Only love can illumine and recover our sight as we fretfully sojourn through within the black night. Will tenderness bind us in the end as we make our way to ascend and feel our hearts and minds begin to blend as we make amends for all we have done to offend? Believing is all that I have. And I've heard forever you will be at my side to guide my steps upon life's trail, supporting me in my travails. Now, safe from all that lurks below, the way ahead I cannot know. The emptiness preserves the space for you to visit with your grace. How will you come in time or place? Or shall I see you in the face of one whose love will set me free? and journey on through time with me, out of the dark and into the light with greater assurance in my flight. I can rely on love at last. The terrors of the night are past. The end. <laughs> and um, I have another kind of little tiny one. 
<clears throat> it's called, uh, it's um, actually my granddaughter, when I was speaking about rain, she said, it's so cozy in the rain. So the name of this poem is, it's so cozy in the rain. I watch the stories unfold and share a poetic verse told on rectangles of hope. Is it a waste, all this talk? What am I building and where should I walk? A haunting explodes, embraces my head. I wonder out loud, will it all be erased? It wasn't much to do looking out the window and observing urban travelers exiting the bus stop while on my way at 16 to shop. I am comforted by the rain as the grief and loss descend with every raindrop hitting the window's pane. I love the people and I feel their stretch to build a nest just as the birds beyond their pain and sorrows to build homes and roads gathering hope for tomorrow. Now with this visit from my friend the rain and rivers, oceans and waters, yes water without end, immersed in embryonic flow like Noah and the pears seeking new life everywhere. I am reminded by the rain and looking through the window pane and on my bus, I view the scene and enjoy with travelers to daydream. I tried to tell you this in rhyme. Gone is the window pane, and in their place, rectangles of hope now claim this space. We poets tell each other what we see, and if we're lucky, are set free. We reach beyond the cover-ups and touch the truth, which is enough to comfort all who, in, who through their sorrow, assume each other got that wrong, up tomorrow and a day pave once more another way. Yes, this all began with rain, which comforts each of us in pain. Then, as the sun begins to shine, we greet the day, and with the time of day, we claim the future that remains. Thanks. Respond. Thanks, Trace. I love the, um, I love the, I love what, you know, children, but people say the darndest things, don't they? It's so cozy in the rain. What a lovely phrase. It wasn't that, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. At the risk of upsetting um, D, I'm going to reference pop music and again. Uh, the Beatles uh, album and song A Hard Days and Days Night came from, they were doing a recording session by night. And when they came over to the studio in the morning, Ringo Starr said to John Lennon, that was a hard day's night. And he thought, wow, I love that. And off he went. <laughs> I've, li I've got lists of those kind of things in my head, but I'll just leave it that one for the moment. Thank you. Oh, Catherine, you've left me down, my darling. Where are you? I'm devastated. Devastated. Absolutely. I can read something else. I can read something else. Absolutely devastated. Let me, give me 10 minutes to get over the shock you've just given. <laughs> and the Allen is next. How you doing? Have you got your mic problem sorted out, hopefully? Yeah, yeah can you hear me okay? Give a thumbs up or press the reactions button for thumbs up. Cool. Um, Miss Catherine. Miss um, Catherine, I think you're next. No, I think the I think uh, the stand called you next, Dee. The you're I next. Think. You're on. Hi. Right. I'm going to do two poems tonight, and the first one is an old one that I wrote back in 2009, and it's it's inspired by the little talk with Massimo Elijah from Philadelphia, USA. So, and to assist me in this endeavor, I'm gonna use the share screen feature. The first poem, like I said, was written back in May of 2009. And I'm gonna try out a little call and response thing. What's the title of that poem, y'all? It's called Clear Cut. I want to hear you. I want to hear anybody from the audience who's willing to yell back the title of the poem. When I point to you, you yell clear cut. All right? I can't fucking see it. Right. Clear cut. Hold on. I, we got to see you. Oh, there you go. All right. All right one more time. Clear cut. Clear cut. Good. All right. 
Now, without further ado, clear cut land improvement to selfish minds development. Clear cut. Clear cut. Clear cut. Introduction of the strains to the woodland expanse, profits in the short range, into the log trucks, into the cranes, loggers activate saws roaring throughout the terrain, ancient wood meets spinning steel, guided by human hands, stumps of gravel shall remain, Greek cathedral that stands. Concentration upon long range devastation. Disrespect. For the wild that made us behold the greenhouse effect, sing a soft requiem to the disappearing force. Its replacement, a credit to progress, downfall of wood and leaf, ground to timber in favor of concrete. The land is fallow, and damn what? Whether trees return, isn't it so? Clear cut. It would take another hundreds of years. Steady warming of the earth confirms the darkest fears. Clear cut. Concentration upon long range devastation. Clear cut. Am ambush gates, um, unless we take to the wilderness and block the saw blades. Clear cut. <laughs> we were all just out to sink, <laughs> putting off your stress. Oh. That was called, that was called, that was called clear cut. <laughs> And that's for all the environmentalists in the house. A little piece on deforestation. And the last piece I'm going to do is on a more positive tip. And I'm going to use the share screen feature one more time. The second poem I'm about to do comes from my fifth book, Eloi Onichi. Poems, 2013 to 2018, released Earth Day 2020. And this is from section two of the book entitled Beauty of Nature. And this is one of those bio poems from pages 24 and 25. This is called Washakwone, based on actual people and events. Many who had hiked through Canadian wilderness a century ago took notice of a bird in flight, a rare one deal jiba called Washakone, he who flies by night. At once a hunter, a guide, a trapper, a living made from the furs in his sight, a rare one deal jiba called Washakone, he who flies by night. Into his forest lair he gave shelter to a pair, a beavers and a female pony, beautiful, willful, contrite, a rare one deal jiba called Washakone, he who flies by night. He recorded every caper onto pages of paper, turned articles and books, thousands read his every insight. A rare one deal jiba called Washakwone, he who flies by night. He took bold strides to speak for trees and wild lives. Nature's preservation from devastation became his plight. A rare one deal jiba called Washakwone, he who flies by night. Then he traveled to an evening powwow where it shown native chiefs how he embraced their ways and mastered their sacred dances by firelight. A rare one deal jiba called Washakwone, he who flies by night. In Canada and England, news has spread. One day at home, he was suddenly dead. His secrets out, the red Indian was English and white. A rare one deal jiba called Washakwone, he who flew by night. But never mind the buckskins, the feather headdress, the moccasins, or false tales about his past and his slight. A rare one the Ojibwa called Washakwone, he who flew by night. His other steps were true after all. Prevented, preventing ecology steady fall, what mattered was the nature of his fight. A rare one the Ojibwa called Washakwone, he who flew by night. Fantastic. Is. Oh. That was called Washakwone, written for and about Canada's very first environmentalist, English born Archibald Bellany, better known as Grey Owl, 1888 to 1938. Rest in peace. And that first picture I've shown you was the real Grey Owl and Pony, or Washakwone and and a hareo, if you prefer, back in 1931 at a national park in Canada. And I'm gonna show you one last picture. 
and then I'm going to be out your hair. <laughs> and this is a picture of the Hollywood version oh, of yeah. the Hollywood version of Grey Owl and Pony, as played by Irish actor, handsome leading man type, Pierce Brosnan, and Canadian actor, French actress, Annie Gallipo. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And that last poem came out of my fifth book, Eloi or Nietzsche, now available from Conviction to Change Publishing. From this mic to your ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening. Am I on? I am. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, William. Will you? Yeah, powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. No, Susanna. Thank you. Hey, Susanna. How are you, love? I'm good. I'm good. So I'm going to read uh, a poem that I wrote last year. One, one of the first poems I wrote. Um, I've been writing poetry only for one year. It was literally thanks to the, to the lockdown. Um, although years ago I tried during a, a few workshops out of Vale. So that's my first poem, <laughs> finished poem. It's called Half Awake. I steal the cigarette from between your fingers for a puff, for the sake of flirting. I don't smoke either. The soft blanket on that white morning in my bedroom and the obstination of my dog's breath under the door. Did you really bring the stinky chicken roll in the bedroom? Plantago's heads are bumping on the plastic of my sandals, a snare drum announcing my feet. You're the last man I saw asleep, the last deep voice I laughed with when the drunk man fell asleep on his sandwich in Lennox. The two pigeons we saw curled up in the cold night were balancing on a thick wire. How do they do that? Did they choose each other or they just joined together for the sake of warmth? I don't close my eyes while nakedness surprises me and I'm balancing my weight on the mattress next to you, pondering the shades of your ginger hair. The <laughs> Who's laughing? <laughs> the, <Sorry>. cliche. <laughs> the cliche of meeting a musician one night. I love, me, I love Mingus too, and wow, the story of the clown. That could be me trying to keep the hates of our laughter so that I don't lose your undivided attention. I'm half awake on my wire and fear in the morning arriving too soon. I notice a polite stranger in my bed. I watch you brushing your teeth and gently folding your toothbrush in the cellophane. You do it as if you were, as if you were handling a delicate flower a dear picture from when you were a child. You are gone in the gray and cold Sunday morning under a night that wanted more out of lovers and a moon that was so small and clear to be plucked like a pea. Okay, so that was one. And then this is, um, this is, is another poem but I'm still trying to write um, and finish properly. And it's dedicated to the survivors of the Magdalene Laundries, uh, friends of mine who were born in the Bespur house and the mom and, this, uh, uh, and the auntie of a friend of mine um, who gave birth um, in the mothers and baby home. It's called The Story of a Heart. One. Nora's heart. A pale blue and bright red heart is mumbling a lullaby. It belongs to Nora, and when he ran away from the mother's and baby's home, he was kept safe in a bag of potatoes. My cold feet stomp at the variations and repetitions of the rhythm, while the floor turns into a sea of busy fish. Will they stop at the music? The heart song is making the door pulse to open it can now show the map of its blood rivers under the dim light. Two, the heart song. August, in the scent of brown barley, pinches my nose close to my eyes. I find you, your nose under your brother's hat, no air on your light-framed torso. 
Why do men have nipples? Yours look absolutely ridiculous. My legs, they can race you to the cliff and back. I'm the fastest. I shine more than the sun. In fact, I am the sun. You breathe on my corrugations of skin salted hair, hands afraid to touch, rich fat curls rub against, feet gripping the moss. Only the pheasants can hear us. Three, the river Lee moaning. Nora is gone from the sad to the mad, the Lee whispered. She lost her cords, singing and um the umbilical cords wrapped up under her pillow. She dropped her heart in soaps for the rich. She rubbed clean sheets so hard that her hands broke and the blood flooded the laundry to make it all red. Even the bricks, the Lee cried. She was sitting next to her daughter one day, thinking of her, not knowing she was hers. Incredible how baby hands can be so perfect, she thought. Gone from the sad to the mad and back, the Lee said. Four, at the protesting grand parade. This is not my story to tell, the pretty mother said. The hunger was eating the stomachs in Bessborough and the white light aprons of Nora's best tears. The bread wet of dog saliva was pulled out of the dog's teeth, eaten without chewing, so that the buds won't taste. Father Brendan throws holy water on, Ali on Eleanor's hips. Church and the girls, they call it. Women's legs spread open on the altars, receive the Holy Spirit to stop making sins. The father moves slowly from girl to girl while eating blessed fresh bread with bitter sermons. Five, at the toil. The Labour Party passes Nora's heart from hand to hand. Finn Gael reps, grabs it and squeezes it. They wait it. They don't want to look at it. Lorna spells the word integrity syllable by syllable and leaves the Green Party. Newborn babies emerge from the freedom of information, making more brothers and sisters and desolation. High heels of black paid on leather walk aside impeccable blazers to get prepaid lunch and to hide Nora's heart once again. The seal is put, no more risk of compensation. When the heart song becomes loud and clear, it grabs your jaws and tells your fear. The fear of losing the life's been lost, the baby from the sister you loved the most, the one who was told to stay silent when her breasts got purple with hard milk and violence and the kicks and the screams are coming from the ground on the day our duty of care was buried in the mound. Okay, thank you. My apologies, Susan. I was the one who laughed. I should have had myself on mute, but it was a compliment. The laugh, it was just, it was, there was so much imagery in there. I was actually in there when you. I love your outfit, Stan, tonight. Oh, <laughs> you look well, like, you look like a character from the Big Lebonski, I, I think. Uh, well, listen, what's the point in getting dressed up when you don't have to? I love getting dressed up anyway. <laughs> So anyway, no, it was a, it was a genuine compliment. There was so much imagery in that I was actually in there. And when you touched the ginger hair, it was just too much for me. So, but my apologies for laughing out loud. And you need to take your last poem and find a way to get it to to Therese because she's <laughs> in there that it would be good to read this. So try and connect with her um, in some way and get the text book because she wants to read it again. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Margaret. Oregon, where are you going? Where are you, Margaret? Come <laughs> to me, Bjorn. Where are you, Bjorn? Um, the aura is right, yeah. Um, when we have an international audience, I want they understand that. Stand. That's okay, as long as you get it. <laughs> we love you all. Okay. This is very short. It's called Aftermath. Smile when you think of us, just know. Let it waft all around you, wrap you in a cloud, caress you all over, ripple through you softly. Let it touch you, reach you, deeply move you. Then relive the contentment, the warmth and the comfort. Find your feelings away. 
ready to retrieve from love's treasure trove. <laughs> That's it. Good woman, Margaret. Mm. That's it, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Only one tonight. Well, um, I can find another one if you like. Um, there was, um, I think it was, I can't remember which, um, um, which poetry group I was in, but um, Chris George was at it anyway, and he was pretending that in America they have um, a national kissing day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called a kiss, a sensual kiss enveloped in bliss, lips in sync, saliva linked, tongue tips dancing, circling, entwining, lightly beguiling, brightly enticing. Physical jerks, the result of such perks, causing sparks, flaming starts. That's it. Lovely. Thank you. Loads of rhyming around tonight. I love the idea of a kissing day. I love it. And thanks for reading that because it's just reminded me I heard an amazing story the other day that, that I'm going to try and write something about. So a friend of mine was telling me that when he was 11, the girls, the girls who were a little bit older, the 12, 13 and 14 year olds used to practice their kissing on him. He was <laughs> legend. I mean, legend. Just <laughs> and, and for the international audience, uh, Bior is a cork slang for a woman or a girl. No, last but not least, Mags Creedon. Have we got the guitar, Mags? Okay, as I say, last but not least, but if somebody still, if somebody you know has had a, a last minute moment of inspiration and you want to get on, just pop your name in the, the chat there and we'll get you in. All right. Can't hear you, Mags. I get sucked into the poetry and I always you know. <laughs> forget him on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of get sucked into the poetry and I get um, fascinated when it's my turn and I hope my guitar is in tune. I just want to do a quick one that I've done before, I'd say 2015. I think seeing Rosalind reminds me of it. Well, it's kind of, it's my music, he's soundy thing. It's my son, one of them when he was studying, uh, played so much different instruments, but he get tired of everything and move on to another thing. And we had death metal to classic guitar to the whole works, like the drums. And uh, he, he went to a phase of studying and then turning up after DJing in Banner Beach and you'd hear doonch, 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 two in the morning. I said, he's home. So this was very much flash fiction at 2 a.m. The drums. Harkin, my son's arrival announced. The drums, the drums. Bush telegraph through our privet hedge. He rumbles through the cattle grid. Doonch doonches his way up the drive and swinging past the branches, he relaunches. He's returning in a cargo full of Sputniks, sort of gorgeous lunar capsules. Boom boxing his way home. Windows down, he comes aground, wrapped around with Dolby surround sound. His primal equinoxal dream in a bass beat, a treble, an ultra vox, ultra spanix, full swing. Silent now, the speakers are silent now. Their black felt has muffled the screams of the crowd. Sigh out in peace I breathe, he's home. His martial amps are humped up back inside. His Behringer sleeps beside the mic and he rests his down in, uh, on his downy velvet pillow, his bland pleasure dome, and sleeps his dreams with two hours till morning. At last, the set piece, every number played, mise on set at peace. So that was for Robert. And then the little song that kind of goes with this was like, in my ignorant way, was recording songs with, uh, I was fascinated by, I ended up working about eight sound engineers to, to record a few songs for a project. But I used to be fascinated because like light comes and it's manufactured by man to do something incredibly else. And then sound was always there, but now look what sound engineers can do with it. So it's kind of along that line. So you might have heard this one well before. It's called In the Box. Whenever I did a, a take, that's it. Mags, that's in the box. So I'll try and see if it works now, Fast and Furious. Okay. A sky gazer can watch for waves up there. 
listened and found the air's ambient sound. That a whoosh of atmosphere passing through him, saying, Let there be me, like came crashing to ground. Light came at its own speed, shedding its lightnings, illuminating all but without music, it seems. The quiet planet said its plain chant was done beneath walls of background sound. Plain chant just loved. Plain chant loved. Dominus Vobiscum. Dominus Vobiscum. We need a new palette to color each tone, so the arch was formed in the language of sine curves. The, ba the bass beat was built for foundations to rock, white percussive beats bring rhythms on top, vertical angles, symbols to greet you. He's in the box, the sound creator seeks you. So gift the earth then, eyes to heaven, ears to the ground, now syncopate them, now syncopate them, oh yeah, and that's the box. <laughs> it's a potty song. Classy as always, Mike's. classy <laughs> as always, thanks a million love. I'm just going to read that poem to you um, that I mentioned earlier on, so it was when Sue Blue was doing the one about the muse. They almost, I don't know, it was almost like you were begging the muse for a little bit of attention. Anyway, it put me in mind of this. It's written by a Russian poet, Vladimir Mayakovsky, and it's called A Talk with a Tax Collector. Citizen tax collector, excuse me for disturbing you. Thank you. Don't bother. I'll stand. I have here a business of a delicate nature about the place of the poet in the workers' society among storekeepers and property holders. I too submit taxes and take punishment. You demand from me 500 semi-annually and 25 for not sending in my statements. My work is like any other work. See how much I've lost. Look at the costs in my production and how much is being spent on materials. You, of course, are familiar with the phenomenon of rhyme. Let's say a line would end with the word father and then skipping a line, counting the syllable, syllables. We put some such da 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 bother. Speaking in your terms, the rhyme is like a promissory note to be honored in the third line. That's the order. So you look for the small change of suffixes and flexions in the half empty cash drawer of declensions and conjunctions. You start putting a word into the line but it doesn't fit, so you press and you break it. Citizen tax collector, I swear, for the poet, the cost of these words runs into money. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And so at the end of the night, I, I'm going to hand you back to Mose. I think she might have some housekeeping uh, announcements. If not, we're done, done. I think Martina, Martina has her hand up, so maybe she wants to do the open mic. Nope, I didn't have my hand up. You didn't? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was <laughs> that. It must have been a hallucination. You want to that, was say the clapping hand. that was the clapping hand Moza. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Well, if, if people can still speak. Um, thank you all very much for coming, um, especially, of course, our uh, guest star, Massimo and all the facilitators and all the other stars because obviously we like a firmament with loads of stars and um, thank you to the Baras <laughs> for giving us our name and to the Cork Arts Office for giving us a little money and um, about next the next session is a bit weird because it's going to be live Live, that's the idea, live at the back of the barras in um, West Cork. Only 20 people are supposedly allowed and <laughs> they, they could just sit four at the table and they're not supposed to speak loud or pass the mic. So it's going to be a, a performance with uh, Daniel Galvin. I asked 
Lauren, but she had better things to do. <laughs> Lauren, we've never seen Lauren in person. Tato uh, Park. Tato Park. <laughs> but she recommended Daniel and he's pleased to do it. And he's from, quite local from Bolin Spittle. No spitting around, but allowed with Paul and Spittle. Uh, so it's going to be on Eventbrite and we'll let our mailing list know, um, you know, uh, where they can fight for the tickets. It's going to be free, but still. Uh, yeah, it's a bit weird because we've got two parallel lives, obviously. We've gone Zoom and now we, we have the international connections and then suddenly it's back to local and it's very restricted. But maybe we'll do both in August, uh, but we'll still have to work talk about that so we'll let you know if you are not on our mailing list please put your uh, email address in the chat and we can add you and apart from that thank you so much for for coming have a lovely day evening night summer or winter whatever applies mm. thank you talk to you soon I love the, you the, uh, the logo Rafe, as well i don't know why you're not showing us your face but i love the logo <laughs> no, I'm going to...